Welcome to Wiregirls. This tutorial is a asymmetrical beaded heady pendant. Now a heady pendant, um, it seems to have developed the name just recently. They, they tend to be very firm solid pendants like the one in the image with coils and different pieces of wire and that's what we're going to be making. So you're going to need 0.8mm or 20 gauge round wire, some 0.4mm or 26 gauge and a focal bead. Now the focal bead that I'm using is an 8mm bead. I bought it from Fire Mountain Gems and it's a sterling silver bead that has got copper accents over the top of it. They are quite expensive but it's a really really pretty bead. Um, if I just show you this one that I've made, this one I've made in silver and I've got the same bead in there and the coils and it just gives this strength you know it's sort of a really compact um, firm pendant and that's what we're going to be making so first of all let's think about shape we're working with a round bead so usually to go around that bead especially with a coil you'd be looking at probably a, like a teardrop shape and that's very nice and it works very well and people have used it a lot and they use it a lot because it works and you chain goes through there. But try thinking of something else. Think of different angles. So maybe if your curves all went inwards like that so you had nice geometric points with your bead in the middle. That might be nice. But for this particular bead it's got quite a large hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wire through and I'm going to bring it out the side and wrap it all the way around and back to the top back up to my bales up there so that this side will sort of tuck in and there'll be this little um, piece missing little like it's been nibbled on one side it's not much different to the the pair but it, it's just a little bit and it's gonna really showcase this bead so we're going to need to make the coil that goes along the edge of the pendant really that is our focal point and this is my wiggly woggly bendy coil. It is so wiggly because I've used the very fine wire and this fine uh, rod that came with my coiling gizmo. Now it's such a long rod because it, it came with the really big coiling gizmo. If you don't have one of those you can always just take the wire, take your 26 gauge wire and work directly onto this wire and just wrap around the wire it will give you a very very similar effect but I've got the coil so I'm just going to slip it over the top of the uh, 0.8 mil or 20 gauge round wire you don't really need anything heavy if you get anything heavy in this it does becomes a very very heavy pendant so I'm going to fasten this end of the 0.4 or the 26 gauge tight onto the 0.8 and I'm just going to tighten that down with the pliers. I've probably got about two inch sticking out at the end um, or five centimeters because I'm going to fasten this onto my coiling gizmo to create that lovely sort of ornate curl that goes up the side so I need a little bit of wire so I'll just trim that off and I'll smooth, well oh actually there's a bit much to smooth down so I'll just wrap it round again. If you need to see more how to make just have a look on the skill set videos and there is how to make beads uh, with a coiling gizmo. It's exactly the same thing that we're doing. It probably gives it you in a little bit more detail. So let's just fasten this to the coiling gizmo. Now I nearly brought the camera trying to do this and actually allow you to see what I was doing so basically I've fastened it on out of shot um, and then I'm going to work from there. I've just wrapped it around the little blobby bit at the top. Now I want you to see I am working from the reel here so I'm still attached with my 0.8 on my 20 gauge round wire. I'm just going to slide that in there this isn't the tiniest edge. Can you see how that's loose? And it's not attached yet. I want to leave that like that on purpose because I want to give it the opportunity to stretch or slide 
which it won't do if I've attached it on both ends. So can I do this while I'm under the camera or am I going to break everything? Just wrapping. This is really difficult. What I would normally do is I would it would be clamped to the table. I would hold the end of the wire, the, the 0.8 wire, not the coiled bit, with my left hand. And with my right hand, I would wind the handle. I'm trying to find a way that I can prop this up so you can actually see what I am doing, but it is pretty hopeless. Right, so I'm holding that end, and I'm going to wind that end. And really, that's all I'm going to do. But I'm going to do that <laughs> on my lap because I just can't do it underneath the camera. So there we go. The magic of uh, fast forwarding. So can you see now that I've got my, I've wound as far as my finer wire was coiled. I've now cut off from the reel so that I'm not attached anymore. And I'm just wrapping that fine 26 gauge or 0.4 mil around the 0.8 mil or the 20 gauge wire. And I'm wrapping it around quite a few times, probably five or six times, so that it's nice and firm. And then I'll trim that off with my snips and smooth that down with the pliers. Okay, and then I'm going to wrap that, tighten it down. Let's just pop it back in its little machine. If you have one of these that clamps to the table, just clamp it to the table. It's so much easier than try to hold it in your hands. So I've got my thumb against the wire there to give it some back tension. And I'm just going to wind that so that it's got like a little end on it. Nice and tight. Undo this end. And then I can slide the whole thing off the... Come on, undo. That's it slide the whole thing off and it doesn't want to because I did it so tight so if you've done it tight you hold that end and sort of semi unravel and then semi unravel the other end and it will just loosen it enough to slide it off so now I have a nice coil to go around the edge of my pendant let's just trim that end and that end, we'll need some of it I just don't need all that bit. Right then. Now the wire will go through the bead. Let's just have a look. And up to the top. So I'm bending it all the way round so that I can see what it looks like. And then I can do a little bit of tweaking and bending with my fingers. As you can see, this is now only two inches long so I started with an eight inch coil and by the time I've wound it up I've only got two inch left come here you bead sorry I'm struggling with the sunshine today it really is rather bright um, problem was it was absolutely throwing it down yesterday so I couldn't get it done then right now let me get another piece of wire this again is point. 8 mil and I've probably trimmed oh I don't know 2 10 inch lengths maybe 12 inch so that would be 30 centimeters each what tends to happen if you give yourself more you'll put more in the design if you give yourself less you'll put less in now can I get both of these through the hole just Right. Now the question is if I just bend this where it's going to come down so it's the bottom one and I'm just bending it so that it will curve around and go up and this is going to be the line that my bead follows. Let's just so it's going to come let me get it attached. I've got my mark now where I know it's going to go to. So I slide my bead on. Now do you remember how we tightened the finer wire around the 0.8 so it didn't go anywhere? I'm doing the same thing again. This end wire is now being tightened around 
that centre white that will lock it into place just a little tighter squeeze that up now we're either going to work two ways on this we're either going to be able to get both wires through the middle in which case I will have a secondary wire and a good anchor point for it or we won't and I've got a nasty feeling that I'm not going to so I'm just going to trim this end off which means my bead's not going to go anywhere I'm calling it a bead but you know what I mean the coil just get that neat and flattened down with my pliers right so no sharp bits that's what we want but that's quite bulky is that and I aren't sure that I get. what I want is can you see how that 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 sort of pointed bit at the end that I've just wrapped around I want that to go into the bead so that it's got a nice firm point and then I can bend all the way around now yeah it's not going to go in I don't think with that other wire there no let me just see if I can tighten it up a little bit take that one out oops come here yeah you see how it goes in really easy without the other one there that's what I wanted I wanted that um, stability if you like so I've bent the other end of the wire up so it shouldn't be moving too much and then let's bend around the wire okay just give it a shove with my fingers even that out a little bit yeah we don't want any pulled bits but we do want a slight gap in between the bead and the coil now the other wire well it's not the other wire it's the other end of the wire that came out I'm just wrapping that top one around both the wires I will hold everything in place and stop everything moving about give me a little bit more stability okay so shall we get rid of that yes let's get rid of that because I don't want to pull myself while I'm working so we cut that off and press the end down there we go make sure it's neat there's no point in having a, a sloppy fastener anyway you might as well have them all nice and neat and then if it does show now I'm going to see if I can just wheedle this wire through the bead but I can't. It won't go in. Oh well, don't matter. Um, okay, to add this wire in, I can just pop it through there to about the halfway point and then just bend it around. So it goes all the way over and meets, and then I'm just going to give it a little bit of a squeeze with the pliers just to tighten it up a little bit there it can't go anywhere it can't drop off or it can twiddle round in circles but the whole thing's never going to come off now I'm going to do some weaving with some my finer wire so this is back to the 0.4mm or the 26 gauge and I'm going to start by wrapping around four or five times around one wire and just pressing that down and then I'm going to slide that all the way down as far as it will go in you go to that end and then I'm going to work a figure of eight weave so because I was coming over the bottom wire from how I'd wrapped it and then going to go underneath the top wire go around it slide the whole thing back again wrap around all the way around the top wire come around and then I'm going to feed that 
in between so let me just two wires three or four wraps there and then I've gone underneath that one wrapped around a couple of times underneath that one and then I'm going back up wrapping around that one and I'm going to just keep doing that. Can you see how I push down with my index finger and my thumb? I sort of lay the wire through and then I just pop it into place and then wrap around and tuck it in with my thumb and wrap around. I don't have quite as much room as I normally would do if I was sitting this on my lap because of the camera being in the way so it's a little bit awkward however I'm keeping going and I'm doing just the same thing just under and over so you sort of go round one wire drop down through the middle under the other one now I want this bit of weaving nice and tight so over the top of the two thicker wires or the frame wires if you like and then push hard as you can downwards and that will compress your weaving so that it's nice and tight. So let's do, let's see how it's going to fit. Choose which side you want to be the front. I'm going to have this way around. And then think about this weaving. This weaving is going to go between your bead and the coil. So I'm just holding the bead in place and just bending the wires around the bead nice and gradually because this woven section is going to fill our gap between our bead and our coil so all the way tightly around the bead with that side not so tight with the other side because we want it to flare out and make an opening so I'm going to just push that in there. Now I could take this back because it swings easily. I don't need to keep it tucked in while I'm actually working, which is a good thing because it would be very difficult to work in such, you know, sort of close confines. So just back. Now I've got quite uh, a bend there. Now if you think about anything with a bend, if you're going to come around the bend with weaving and you've got two wires, obviously the the inner one is shorter than the outer one. So I might do wires that I want to go around neatly like this, however that gap is bigger than that gap. So to create that yourself when you're doing the weaving is you might do two at the bottom but you might do three at the top and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do two on the shorter or the inner side of the curve and I'm going to do three wraps on the outer or the longer side of the curve. So that's going to be, is that one or two? can't remember. Anyway, let's just squeeze it up and round. That was one. This is two because I'm on the inner edge and then I'm through up to the top and then wrap around one, two, three times before I come back down and come around the bottom and then I'll do two again. This will allow the curve to flow quite naturally and it won't then look awkward. You will have gaps on that top wire. It will be nice and close and neat. So I'm just adjusting and weaving as I'm going and of course I've speeded this up because doing this under the camera does take me quite a long time. When I'm just sitting there with it on my lap I can do it an awful lot faster but uh, the light is getting bad, really bad. I'm going to leave it until tomorrow and see if we have better weather tomorrow. Shall we have another day and we have much better light 
I haven't got a, a ridiculously bright patch so we can see what we're doing. So I'm going to take the weaving again and I'm going to continue. I've done most of the um, curve and we're coming into a straight section now which is going to come up the side of my coil. So oh, here we go. If you feel this is getting loose and that um, you want it tighter say to the coil you could always leave it in position and wrap around the coil as you go. It's not really necessary. It will all stay together beautifully once you've done it. Or if you get to the point where you've finished and you feel that it's not strong enough you can always go back in and uh, tack some wire through to hold it in place. And I must admit for me to be able to have the two frame wires out of the way of the coil it does make it so much easier but I keep popping them back in and testing what it's looking like. So I'm going to keep going because I want to keep going until I reach the top of the coil. So lots and lots more weaving while I do that. backwards and forwards. Now, now we're getting... You probably noticed that my frame wires are gradually becoming further and further apart so it forms a long cone shape. I like this effect. To me it it's nice, it's like lacing on a, on a corset and I, I think it looks really pretty. If you prefer yours to be exactly parallel, do it parallel. This is definitely one of those pendants where we're not quite there yet. Yep, near enough. Let's have a look. Now if I push this down so that it's tight. Let's have a look. I'm a little bit short just need to do a few more round. So let's go as long as I make sure I go the right way. Back round and down and then I'm going to come through there so that it's going through the two wires. You know the two wires that I wrapped together originally? I've gone between those two so that this will just hold firm. I'll go around again. Make sure that the wire is tucked down by just pressing it down with the pliers. And I'm going to go round Everything's sort of in because that side's going to come around the bead and the, the coil's round on the other side. So let me just do that. Now if I coil round like that, I've got a nice cute little loop. The wires, the weaving wires aren't going to go anywhere. And I'm going to put another curl on it and then go out. And then curl that to go back the other way. Just gentle stroking with the thumb will get that to do what I want it to do. But I'm holding well down. I'm not bending from the top, I'm bending from the bottom. So that's quite nice. It sort of frames the bead. Now where it crosses over that point, if I put my pliers on there, and just give it a little bend. When I push the end of the wire between the coil and the weaving that we did, can you see it's gone through there? Then I just pull until the point where I bent it. That way I aren't going to pull out the um, the wave shape or the curve. There we go. Just give that a tug 
and I'm going to straighten that up and I'm going to bring it up and see what that looks like yeah it's kind of nice I do like to have um, a lovely straight shiny wire next to the coil because the coil tends to have such a different texture that it is nice to put something different against it so you've got this sort of thick heaviness of the coil so let me try some beads as well see what they look like this is always about texture this is always about some look matte some look shiny some are smooth some are coiled and then if you pop some beads over the top as well it gives you a different look how many do I? whoops come here just a question of how many I want on what do four look like? I could do with some smaller beads. I think if I had littler beads, four would look okay. But these are four mil ones. I don't got any littler copper beads handy. What's that look like? I think it's too many. So just let me see if I can push them in a bit. Sometimes if you can get them to seat down a little bit further, it will look different. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing them into the weaving that we did and see if it'll sit any better I think I'd be better with less maybe two or three we'll just take that one off so look at that hmm not completely convinced but I'm going to put some uh, wire around because I don't want this movement I want the whole point of this pendant is that it's firm, it's strong, it's it's solid. So I don't want these beads sliding up and down and moving. I've got just some more of the 0 0.4 or the, the 26 gauge wire. And I'm just going to pass that through there. So it's going... Come here. Move that out of the way. I want to wrap it round just the wire that the beads are placed on just to go around a couple of times and that will get it it's almost like a cast on part so that it doesn't unravel let me just round there I'm just going around the top edge of it it's easier than actually threading it through as if I was stitching and seeing I haven't attached the top edge anywhere it's still accessible for me to wrap the wires around. Now pair of pliers on just get those tight. Yeah. Now if I take one of the beads in and then I take the wire down through the weaving it will hold the bead in place but it's also I'm going to pull it all the way through. I'm then going to come back around, go up as far as you'll go. I'm going to come back around the coil, but it will slide in between the coil edges. Can you see that? Yeah, go in. <laughs> Get back up there. And then back and go around the wire that the bead is on. So I've attached the bead and make it stay still but I've also attached the wire around the coil. Now go around a few more times and then I will add the next bead and I'll do exactly the same thing again. So the bead goes down I go around the bead down through make sure it doesn't twist push the bead into place and back around the coil holding the bead in place holding the wire that the bead is fastened to in place there we go mm, do I want another one 
let's have a look. Don't think I do. No, I think I like it like that. So I'm going to wrap it round a couple more times just to sort of finish it off because if you just stop it's a little down through in between and back up over the coil again and it's just stitching it in place really then I can tighten that coil up now I could continue to wrap the finer wire around this one all the way up if I want to but I think I'm going to leave it bare kind of like it bare okay yeah so what do I do with this right well let's get rid of it cut it off smooth it down with the pliers There we go. Lovely. Now, little short end here. What do I do with it? Well, if I bend it straight back, I can curl that in a nice curl that is going between the coil. That's a little... Just curl that end. And then I can just too long. Let me just take a snip off and then just press that down. I am pressing it down so hard that it disappears inside the coil. I'm pressing it down just sufficiently that it's not going to pop out and it will just hold there. Okay. So a pendant's coming along. It's getting there. We've got our bead. We've got some weaving. We've got a coil. We've got a few beads on it. Now then, let's have a look. We need to think about um, bales. But I'm just going to take this wire and curve it round and back down. So this is the other end of the weaving that we did. And I'm matching that wire that I've already put round there. Let's have a look. Let's just press that in. This could have gone up. It could have gone to the right hand side of the bead. It could have gone just about anywhere. But I've bent it round so that it matches that wire that's already coming up. And then I'm going to turn the whole piece around and just see where I can put the end and I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the other. I'm going to bend the wire straight out and curl it round so it sort of rests over the coil. Now these aren't perfectly smooth and they're not perfectly parallel but I don't think it matters. It just adds something else. So that will stay nice and neatly in there. What should I do with that end? I could pass that end all the way through. Oops, go on. So they don't want to go through. Okay, if you don't want to go through, I will trim you off. And you'll just sit there into that coil just like the other one did. A lot of the time the design isn't because I drew it beforehand and it's going to end up like this. The design is, well the wire wouldn't go there, so that's where the design is, you know, or the wire wanted to go there, so that's why the design is what it is. So that's just the 0.4mm or the 26 gauge wire that I've just trimmed that we started off where the beads were and I'm just tucking the ends in now. I tend to leave ends loose until I'm sure that I'm not going to require them again. Once I think, yeah, you know, I'm definitely not going to use that, that is the point that I'll then trim off 
and cut them down. So I have two wires at the top that are going to create my uh, my bales and they're going to come over forwards. So let me just get the weaving wire which is still attached and I'm going to start now and I'm going to wrap this around. I'm going over both wires this is giving me some strength at the bottom and I'm snipping this off because this length of wire that I got attached is not enough to make the bales. Now if I'd have left it on I'd have had to join another piece in which always leaves a little tiny gap which I'm not that keen on so I'd rather cut that piece off and leave it for another time use it on something where I don't need so much and then start with the wire back from the uh, direct from the reel and then I know that I've got enough. So I'm going to wrap around sorry move this to the other side it will make life easier for me. So just two or three times just to make sure that it's a nice firm starting point it's not going to go anywhere. If I'd have had more wire left before enough to do the bales I wouldn't have needed to wrap around several times because it would have already been nice and firm. So under and over again and I'm going to the other side under and over and back. You've seen me do this now loads of times so I'm going to wish whiz through this for a little bit. It'd be nice if it really went this fast wouldn't it? If you know if you could put your fingers into high gear and they just went wee. <laughs> Sorry I'm getting carried away. Now I'm just straightening the wires. So I came up at a nice sharp angle like um, a triangle and now I've just changed these wires so that they're more parallel and I'm continuing on in wrapping round twice and then a figure of eight to the other side and doing that. The reason I haven't continued to get wider and wider is that when I bent this back over to the front of the piece I would left be left with an incredibly wide piece of weaving if I continue to get wider you know to, um, with a V so I just brought it back in so that it's parallel pliers are just keeping everything tight don't be frightened of using your pliers to tighten your weaving up let's have a look I think I'm probably almost there now it doesn't need to be very long because we're going to put the uh, round nose pliers on it and then we're going to shape it over and the great thing about this is if you haven't done quite enough when you put the pliers on and you bend over, sorry I moved my hands out of shot let's get that back in for you, there we go um, you can just keep going and do more let's just tighten that bit up now I want this wire to come out to that point and I want that wire to go to there so I flared my wires into the shape I want them to get myself some more fine wire off and now I'll weave in between those two until whoops sorry just got the where I started the wire off it's catching in with the new wire that I'm doing so a figure of eights again but this time I'm working in this new shape that I've given myself so I'm matching where the pendant comes to which is why I like to come over to the from the back to the front but then you can match exactly whatever shape and size you've got at the front so are we there? let me just see if we're yeah we're there ok let's pop it down So my weaving's done and I've got to the point where I am wide enough. Can you see? So it's a nice smooth shape. It goes from there to there all the way across. So with this weaving wire I can't really stitch through anything because it's attached. So I'm going to take my snips and just cut that off. And then I'll go round there and stitch. Where can I stitch through? 
It's just a case of looking for a gap, a hole. Those little loops that I put in earlier, you know those curls, they're ideal for this sort of thing because I can now just go straight through one of those loops. <laughs> straight through one of those loops, she says, and I can't get the wire through. Let's try again. Go through from the back, if it won't let me go through from the front. There we go. And then just pull that nice and tight. And that will attach the front of the bale to the main body of the pendant and the back, meaning that when you put a chain through it or a, a ribbon or something like that, it's not going to come out. Now then, what shall I do with this wire? I'm going to go back up the bale. There we go. We're mirroring the two wires that come up the weaving up the front. So I've now worked across as a figure of eight to the other side. There we go, let's just stitch that through. And around. At the other side. Sorry, it's got tangled. And I'm stitching that through. So just attaching one side and then attaching the other. And then I can just wrap that wire down and up back up the bale so it matches the one on the other side. Now, as you can see, one is an awful lot longer than the other. Shall we get rid of these little end bits? Yes. That's the end bit where I originally started, so let's get rid of that and press it down. Mm, this one. I've gone back around the inside of the wire. I would like to somehow hold these two wires together because I don't want them to separate or catch. So just wrapping around that wire a couple of times so it's tight. I'm going to snip that off. If I was to take it from there right down at the bottom of the wire and then go up to near the top of the wire you'd have like a loose thread and it's amazing how something simple like that will catch the eye and you'll look at it when really it's the one bit you don't want anybody to look at. So I've got this long one and I've got this little short one. They're not long enough to come over the back and fasten onto anything. So I'm going to match them up so that they're both shorter. And then I'm going to take some of the wire and I'm going to go around the two wires together. So just binding them over and over. This is not an in and out or under and over or anything like that. I'm just binding straight over the top to hold them together. Tighten that with my pliers to get it nice and tight together. Yeah, down you go. Then the lower side or the side where we started. I'm just going to make sure it's in the right spot and I'm going to take that and I'm making a little gap in the weaving that was the bales just with my fingernail and then I'm going to thread that through. There we go and then pull that tight that will anchor those wires at the bottom and then this one if I bend the wires if they're going to go up and over the top of the bales all the way down yeah see that just make sure they're flattened in then the other wire can go into the appropriate weaving at the other side all the way over. 
and that will hold its side of the wires in place. Yours may be different, but you will find your own ways of anchoring wherever you need to be. I haven't quite got enough room. If you have no fingernails, or unlike me, you care about your fingernails, um, you might find it's easier to use um, a small dull knife just to use the side of the knife, not to poke in, but just to sort of separate the wires so that you can get in and out. I stopped caring about my fingers and nails probably about 10 years ago, so it really doesn't matter to me if they get all bashed up. There we go. Have I got a gap? Yes. And once I've got a gap, I can just bring that wire in and stitch and just pull it tight. And it's amazing how little metal you actually need to hold something down and in place. So even once round is not bad. I mean if you can get round twice it's it's better, but if you can't and you can only get round once, the chances are it's probably going to hold and manage to get round again. So I'm going to snip that off really close. Smooth it down with the pliers. Let's have a look at the other side. Do I need to get that in again? Try to check how many times I went round. I think I already went round that twice, but we'll see if we can get through again. If we can, I'll take it. If not, yeah, look at that. And then trim the end. Press it down with the pliers. Now I'm not totally convinced that I like these two ends that are just sat there. They're really not tucked in or anything. And if anybody was to look at the back, it does look a little bit unfinished. Let me get all these bits and pieces out of the way. Put you down. Hmm, so let's have a look. However, if I take my pliers, I can separate the two wires. One one way and one the other. And then literally just, I'm going to curve it back inside the, the bale. It's not sharp, it's not sticking out, it's not getting anything. And it looks finished off as opposed to just looking like, you know, two cut pieces of wire that don't really look like anything. So we're just about there. That's our pendant. Now... This is the silver one you can see I've put um it's fairly similar but I put snap set uh, a bez light setting in it. But really I can't wait to see what you make. Obviously I'm gonna go and I'm gonna oxidise this because it's copper and I always give it a scrub up and a and a rub and, and oxidise. Um but I can't see can't wait to see what you make and I'm looking forward to seeing your photos on the forum. That's it all done and oxidised. Thank you very much for watching. Happy wrapping.